Hello everyone, this is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Wednesday, July 27th with a midweek market recap video. We are first going to analyze the current market environment. We're going to look at some other markets, sector analysis, and then finish off with some individual names. Before we get into the video, I want to uh, extend uh, a last minute invite to our webinar, which is now tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, thetraderisk.com forward slash webinar. We're going to talk about strategy trade setups, uh, that's the main topic, uh, what we look for in trades, uh, how we manage those trades. If you're interested in that, uh, drop your email there, attend the webinar tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern, it's open to everyone. If you can't make it, I'll send you it, the recording. Uh, this was an event that was supposed to be held Tuesday due to my own mistakes uh, and maybe uh, some technical issues, I'll, I'll blame it on that. Um, th this event had to get pushed to tomorrow. So last minute, if you guys are interested, check out um, that. Uh, otherwise, let's jump into the action here. S&P 500 closing flat on the day today. Uh, no surprise, this seems to be the pattern that we've been in now for quite some time. Uh, if we take a look at what we've been trading in uh, recently, this range, you can see we've now done about what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days of uh, almost alternating red to green in a very tight 215.50 to about 217, about a dollar fifty range in the SPY ETF. So not a lot of action. We have uh, the pluses is we have worked off those extreme sort of overbought conditions on this big kind of second leg run up here, the big breakout uh, to new all-time highs in the S&P 500. That's very constructive. Uh, we've also digested a cratering uh, energy market. So oil has been falling day after day, uh, taking down that sector as well, all of those um, mining stocks and, and everything that goes with it. Um, so that uh, that has been a constructive piece for the S&P 500 for just holding tight and steady in here uh, amongst those types of factors. Uh, but we haven't really gone anywhere. We've seen breath sort of weaken up a little bit um, in the short term anyway. We've seen uh, the number of advances starting to dry up. New highs are still doing pretty well. Uh, so it's just a very mixed bag. It's a very wait and see sort of environment here. There's not a real lot of... Uh, energy one way or the other. Momentum's kind of really low. We've come to a kind of a grinding halt. There are some things that are working. We'll get into those later in this video. Um, but all things considered, there's you know there's just two ways you can really look at it. For us, it's just more of a wait and see. We certainly still have the bullish bias, um, just given where we are in the market right next to all-time highs. I mean, it's tough to be a bear here. Um, but it's, it's at the same time, we don't want to be overexposed in case we do kind of roll over here and put in a little bit of a pullback. Um, so for us, it's been just kind of keeping up with, you know, moderately invested 50% uh, exposure, not wanting to go too high, not wanting to bring it down too low because we don't want to miss out on things and just continue to sort of rotate into those leading names that are breaking out, acting well uh, in those strong sectors. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. So that's sort of the way we're playing it. Clearly, the levels are, are, are very clear here. 215.50, that's what you want to watch. This cluster of lows here, if we start to close below there. Uh, you just have to be a little bit cautious there in the short term. Uh, the eight period EMA now is quickly already caught up with price and the 20 is also catching up. So uh, that's sort of the way we're looking at it. If you look at the IWM, we kind of just went under, uh, just had this sort of 10 day consolidation and we're actually starting to lift out above it. So IWM starting to lead a little bit to the upside. That's constructive. Notice though, the breakout here above these recent highs isn't some type of rip roaring rally higher. It's just this grind high where we finally kind of emerged from this cluster of highs. So we'll have to see, Does the is the IWM leading what the S&P 500 will be doing in the near future? Um, is it the other way around for now? Uh, IWM is above a very critical 120 level that has been important going back multiple years. I like it. Levels are clearly defined here. If you want to play this kind of breakout, this move higher, this trend, uh, then you kind of know exactly where you should be out, either using this breakout level or perhaps the bottom end of this 
consolidation. So you get a few different spots uh, to manage risk there if you like to keep things nice and tight. The Q's also been levitating higher here. Of course, this was helped uh, dramatically today by Apple earnings yesterday, uh, skewing the Q's uh, outperformance today. So the NASDAQ 100 closed up 69 basis points. Uh, that, uh, again, impacted by Apple, which closed up 6%, I believe, something close to that level. Uh, but notice we are now back to uh, all-time high or multi-year highs, 10-year highs uh, in the queues. Uh, so this should be an interesting level to sort of gauge how the market reacts at this 115 level. This was resistance back in 2015. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of um, – you know, what kind of uh, uh, tug of war gets played here between uh, the bulls and bears as we get up into that 115 level. Of course, we still have some big earnings that could be impacting this index, this sector um, in uh, actually tonight and over tomorrow, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Google. So we'll have to see how those act uh, in the coming days. So that kind of wraps up the broad indices here. Still very bullish on an intermediate long-term basis, short-term. I think you still can remain constructive. Just recognize the tight ranges we're in, um, the lack of volume, the lack of momentum, uh, and just you know plan accordingly for that. Uh, if we get into some of the other markets here, TLT getting a nice bid today, certainly and I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video, we had Fed Day today, of course, that the market now has digested through. Didn't really react too much to it, uh, but it is certainly behind us now. I know some uh, of, of the traders, investors out there looking um, to see what kind of reaction we would get from that um, from today's event, but not much. TLT, though, do, probably getting the biggest impact here uh, with a nice bid, 1.25%. Starting to lift higher now, successfully held support, put in a pivot low. Now let's see if it can get back up to perhaps the these recent highs and retest them uh, or do we fall short make a lower high uh, that'll be interesting but for now TLT looks to be in motion to the upside I like it uh, similar comments here on gold also putting in a bit of a pivot low here uh, holding right where it needed to uh, if you extended this trend line up from the highs going back to February this is where we found uh, some support in gold over the past few days we emerged higher nicely from it today same thing let's see if we can get back up to these recent highs here uh, after we've put in this new pivot low silver similar comments uh, a much more explosive move today already back to the highs a much shallow uh, much more shallow dip that we um, that buyer stepped in at for silver and you can see we're already quickly back to yesterday's range see if we can get some follow through continue this trend to the upside uh, metals looking good once again and that's certainly helped by the US dollar which uh, reversed course today so finally seeing a bit of a down move a little bit of a, a stronger reaction than we've seen recently you can see you had some volatility on the on the uh, Fed announcement earlier today uh, so maybe this is uh, you know is this going to put in some kind of trend change here or some temporary short-term top uh, you know not going to make a prediction but we'll have to see if we do get follow through to the downside or is this just another buying opportunity and we're heading higher in the US dollar We'll have to see how that plays out um, into the rest of the week. Now, if we get into oil here, this is continuing to just roll over here. It's been accelerating down over the past few days. I got the fibs on here from the February lows. Notice... Um, we're, we're still not at the 61.8. We just crossed over that 50% retracement. Notice there is some support here, horizontal support going back from, say, the 18th of April, this kind of pivot low day, the highs from January uh, right in here as well. So there's been a little bit of action right under this $10 level. Let's see if they can step in here. Otherwise, 61.8% golden ratio. Uh, folks out there is at $9.50. So uh, keep an eye on those levels. No interest to me to try and catch a bottom here. Uh, this definitely looks uh, like it's in trouble structurally. It needs plenty of time to repair itself before I'd be interested on the long side. Uh, but for your tactical sort of traders looking for reversals, maybe it's time to uh, start scoping that out on those shorter term time frames. UNG also, um, you know, acting much, much better than USO, its, it's, it's counterpart there. But it's still just kind of sleepy kind of consolidating in this range here if it can stay above this 780 dollar level where it found these uh, 
or found support last week, uh, that would certainly be constructive. To get some new momentum in here, though, it has to get back above eight and a quarter. Uh, and, and then if it can get back above there, a close above there, probably can get back in motion towards these recent highs. So let's see how that one plays out uh, in the coming days and weeks. Now, looking at some of the sector analysis now, uh, let's get into first semis. This is just continues to be on fire. Um, we've seen this continue to break out. This has been a leader for some time now. You can see on the monthly time frame, look how beautiful this month is acting now as a breakout bar up 12% just in this month alone, taking out the old highs, um, crushing out, crushing the old highs. Um, so let's see, you know, if we can see further leadership here in the coming weeks and months in semiconductors, that would certainly be a positive for the market. Also, so XLV, which continues to act well, we've, we've been on top of this one ever since kind of breaking above the 7250 level, uh, all of these highs going back to uh, mid-2015. It's not quite at these uh, at the highs from 2015, but it has taken out some significant res resistance. It does look like it's in motion there. Um, maybe $77 is the uh, you know intermediate term target for XLV, uh, and and specifically biotech, which had a great day today. This is a trade that we've been in um, since uh, this day right here on the 20th is when members and I got involved in this on this kind of breakout bar. We have uh, let's see, we've we've. You know, kind of uh, stood in this as it, as it moved sideways here over the past few days, digested some earnings reports, uh, and then it had that nice kind of explosion bar higher today. We took some profits off today, but um, it definitely looks like there's a bit of a chase here. If this can get some follow through tomorrow, uh, this could be a quick mover as it suddenly starts to emerge from you know a six, seven month holding pattern here that, that the biotech uh, index has been in. So certainly something to keep on watch. We're long this. Uh, we've taken some profits today, but we're going to see if we can get a little bit more out of it. Uh, technology, we discussed that at the front of the video. This has been continuing to lead. And financials are interesting here. They're sleeping right at resistance. Resistance. I, I wouldn't um, let these fall off your guard. They could come to life here if we can start to get some type of squeeze above 2375. If that's the case, start to look at some of these individual uh, financials underneath the hood here of the XLF. But take a look at the resistance that it's bumping up against going all the way back to 2015. This could be the new sort of leg in life that the S&P 500 needs uh, to get that momentum back in phase. So keep an eye on the financials. On the downside, as far as sectors go, staples got crushed today down one and a half percent really starting to roll over here again weekly time frame still in a very healthy long-term structural trend uh, but on the daily time frame certainly got uh, the the you know the balloon was popped as far as momentum goes and and to a slightly lesser extent utilities today uh, also suffering uh, down 1.15 percent taking not really taking out res uh, some some prior support here but but challenging it and undercutting it intraday so we'll have to see if we can if we can get some stabilization here over the next few days but certainly uh, those the, that safety that safety kind of sector play utilities staples that was uh, certainly where we saw some of the the unwind happen today now getting into some of the individual names Apple up six and a half percent today off of earnings this is now at a very critical level look at the weekly chart you can see this trend line that extends from all-time highs is where we are challenging yet again we've tested this trend line one two you know three four this is basically the fifth time depending on how you want to draw this but uh, this is about the fifth time that we're testing this trend line you can see the 8 and 20 MACD is trying to go positive here uh, on the weekly chart this is going to be an interesting level to see if we can get above it for me, I'd want to see us, you know, we closed near the lows of the day. That's not um, that encouraging, but it does deserve a little bit of digestion here. We really want to get this back above 105. If, if, if this can start to really convincingly get a close above today's highs and then get above 105, then perhaps you get some uh, larger term kind of breakout move underway here. Uh, otherwise, if we start to roll over and fill this gap, then, then we kind of still have the same old apple that we've had uh, for the past 12 months, 16 months, however long we've been basing sideways. 
Facebook uh, is reporting earnings out after the bell, and let me see if I can see if they've reported. They have. Um, 130 is where price is currently trading right now, so you can see it's a nice beat, seven points higher than the close. Uh, that's about a 7% move, or five, six, seven percent move. Uh, in the after hours right now, it's about 4.15 Eastern time, so that certainly could change by the time you're watching this or tomorrow session, but that's new all-time highs in Facebook. The trend continues, um, even though uh, you know th there's been you know a lot of doubt in this and, and whether or not you know it's coming to a slow. You can see momentum has been slowly on the decline here by the MACD. However, the trend still remains higher. Price is still continuing to to work in the bull's favor, so you have to respect that. Twitter. Um, got crushed again on earnings. This is just the never ending story. Twitter's really just in a in a very clear cut range now. $19 is where we got the rally to, pre, you know, the pre run up rally into earnings. This is where we found resistance back in January, March, uh, and this is where we failed now um, thanks to earnings. So you, uh, to me, you have a very clear kind of $14 to $19, $5 range in Twitter. That's like 20% um, you know, back and forth movement. And this is to me dead money here uh, until you get a real significant move one way or the other. Uh, given the earnings gap, given the kind of uh, technical damage that this this uh, suffered uh, today, it just tells me that this is this could be in here for, you know, the next quarter until they report again and show something different, show some improvement. Uh, to me, Twitter just looks like it's going to be a basing candidate. Will it come all the way to back down to the lower end and retest? Perhaps. Uh, maybe it puts in a higher low, but uh, this certainly seems like the playground Twitter's in uh, in the in the intermediate term. Uh, and then finally, Tesla will end here tonight. Uh, Tesla tried to push back above um, this 230 level. It hasn't been able to get above there. It did kind of reject close, uh, you know, back into yesterday's session. So keep an eye on this. Still, to me, is messy. Um, a lot of intraday action here in Tesla. These these uh, the intraday action still seems. Uh, like like something a day trader would want to be paying attention to for the swing trading standpoint. I still want to avoid it, um, but uh, that's sort of the read there on Tesla. So I hope this video helps. Once again, if you guys are interested in the webinar, we're holding tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's intraday. Um, check out traderist.com forward slash webinar. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.